additional questions. Um, <coughs> at this point in time, what's on the agenda is the estoppel certificate that uh, I'm sure Mr. Cunard can explain better than I can, but uh, in short is uh, after a long kind of period of things developing, they are at a point with financing where financing, and when I say they, I mean uh, Solet, uh, financing has been confirmed on their end, and they are looking for the district to uh, basically confirm that we are now ready to move forward. What this would do, in essence, and the only reason I put it on the agenda as such um, is, you know, for transparency's sake, uh, it does provide them a notice to proceed in engineering and design. Uh, that does put the district at a point in time where we are starting to commit to this project from a more financial basis, meaning if we start to pull out, uh, there are for lack of a better term, penalties that the district would have to pay. They are spelled out in the original PPA. Um, they are not significant, I think, all the way up to the end. The largest one is uh, 10,000, maybe 15. Uh, I think it's up to 15. 15, and it goes through its steps depending on how far they have progressed into the work of doing engineering and design because that's going to cost them money to do it next life in the contract. Um, I would certainly open it up to questions or if Mr. Kuhnhardt has uh, any other commentary that I did not cover what has been included in here. And again, I apologize because it is very hard to take a very nice colored photograph and turn it into a uh, scanned image on a black and white uh, that they have uh, sent over the uh, new rendering of several meetings ago, the board, uh, the, decided on enlarging the shade structure, allowing the district to produce more solar energy to offset their other bills a little bit stronger. Um, they did do a new rendering of that. I will say Shane and myself, um, Shane DeMarta and myself, went out there, fully measured it off as to where it would go, how tall it would be. Um, you can't necessarily see in here, so I will state it out loud for the record, because uh, I am 99% sure. Uh, the front edge is 9 feet tall, the back edge is 12.7 feet tall, it is 22 feet front to back and 39.5 feet left to right. Um, we did go out, we measured it, we saw where it fits. One of the advantages of it being slightly taller than the other one is as uh, it, will, it looks like it will actually be able to clear some of the shower header wood that goes all the way up and over. You can't really see it in this image, um, but it, well, without the covering the shower, just the wood that sticks off beyond the edge of the shower, it'll actually should be able to clear that, which gives it a little bit more room to be able to pull it a little bit closer uh, towards it. Uh, we measured off and looked at roughly the best we could where it would fall in front of the shed. Um, Shane, you're welcome to contradict if you believe, but it, I believe it adds space. If there is space, the shed wouldn't necessarily need to be moved where we store the pool covers would still fit in that same area and it would increase two things. It would increase the usable rental area that we rent out there, creating even more shaded area. And because it is deeper, it's going to extend deeper both towards the top pool and towards the main pool. It's going to provide more shade into the top pool area based on the direction of the sun. Uh, that is something that we have certainly heard from a lot of families with young children in that area specific, that there's just not a lot of shade area for them to sit. Uh, the next page in here uh, was produced by SolEd. Uh, these are the latest cost savings analysis, uh, as well as the cash flow statements. Uh, this uh, incorporates the increased system size that is now at 56.4 kilowatts. Um, it shows the projected utility cost without solar on the current tariff that we are on through PG&E, which is known as A6, uh, and kind of calculates everything all the way through to show where we would fall after this has been put on. The second one gets a little bit tricky, but what SolEd has basically done for the benefit of the district has done their uh, research, and I have most of this uh, confirmed with PG&E in terms of A10. Uh, they are suggesting that if we don't go solar, there are savings to be had 
within the district by switching to the A10 rate tariff, at which point we would uh, wouldn't be paying quite as much to PG&E for our current usage of electricity. I would throw a caveat to that that says uh, when you switch tariffs, you can only do it one time per year. So if we didn't go solar right now and decided to go move to A10 as in theory, um, you were on A10 for the next year and uh, confirmed from PG&E they is a, the very, very realistic possibility that they are going to eliminate the A6 tariff. Uh, we would be grandfathered into it if we stayed on A6 and they will, uh, but if we switch to A10 and they eliminate it, we can't get back to A6 and A6 is the most advantageous tariff to be on when implementing solar. So those are kind of some of the consideration factors there. Please, David, you're more of an expert on that than I am. Chime in if what I'm saying doesn't jive or make sense. Um, and then following is the actual estoppel certificate in solar PBA. And within here, as you can see uh, from agreement uh, on the number three, subsection D is where it definitely calls out a notice to proceed um, pursuant to a section of the original contract, which is basically notice to proceed to engineering and design. Uh, it is not necessarily a notice to proceed to construction, at which point is the final kind of let's build this thing. Is that right? Good. Great summary. Can we try? With all due respect, can we hear Steven. from the, the vendor? Steve. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Please do talk about it. Sorry. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Eric? No, not at this point in time. Okay. Mr. Greenhart. Uh, Mr. Chairman, congratulations. Again, congratulations to each of you who was elected, at, at least for as long as you enjoy it. <laughs> congratulations. Um, I do want to back up just ever so slightly because um, some of the questions that came forward that I have respons been responsive to, I don't know whether Isabella's email and my responses got to everybody. I'm kind of hoping that that's the case because there are some very good sort of big picture questions about how this works and so forth. And uh, as much as we think we communicate uh, accurately, it doesn't always completely get retained. Uh, and energy uh, and energy costs are an ethereal matter that people don't, average people don't deal with on, on a daily basis. <clears throat> but the basic premise here was this is, you're part of a group buy that uh, nine different jurisdictions got into. Fourteen in all were originally in it, but some bought all cash and a couple backed out because their systems just were not going to be feasible. Um, sea Ranch couldn't get out of the fog and their system wouldn't be feasible. So this bundle is, uh, is proceeding, and the essential genius of it is let's keep standardized forms, standardized procedures, uh, common um, practitioners so that we can, we can reduce our costs and then deliver as much savings as possible to you. Our mission as a benefit corporation is to deliver clean energy at a savings to public entities with public purpose. And if we can't deliver savings, then we would just as soon not, not do it. Um, now, the, uh, let's, even though uh, the, your system is, has gotten a little bit smaller from the original hoped for design, partly because you've implemented these great energy efficiency solutions for the pool and the pumps. And with that slightly smaller system, you're one of the smallest in our program. And I, I would have to say that it's, um, it's a true statement that most solar companies wouldn't uh, readily work with your small and complex system. It just, it's just too much, too much trouble for too little uh, benefit. So um, now, I, on the other hand, uh, this is not a huge benefit to us either. So we're somewhat indifferent to your decision. Uh, your fundamental decision is do you want to advance with the solar and go green and get savings or not. There isn't any out of pocket other than things that you want to take care of, like uh, there are certain uh, improvements to the roof which are, have been identified that uh, should be uh, done at this point. And, um, but those should probably be done any, in any case, whether or not you go solar. 
um, you're just, in this solar power purchase agreement, you're just paying for the clean energy delivered. Nothing more. And the price that we set has a price in every year of those 20 years. It happens to start at a certain level to give savings. It goes up by 2.5% per year for 15 years, and then it goes down by 10% per year. Nobody else is offering that goes down. And on the other side, your PG&E rate, there is absolutely no guarantee of what that rate will be next year, the year after, the year after that. On average, they've gone up more than 3% per year in the last 30 years. Who knows what's going to be true in the, in the future? Everybody's guess, your guess. If you think that utility cost and MCE cost is going to go down in the future, you probably shouldn't sign this contract. <coughs> But whatever, this is a hedge because it's a known rate, not an unknown variable rate. Two things about timing. Eric referred to the, um, the A6. The, the favorable uh, solar tariff is going to go away sometime in 2016. PG&E has let that be known. Uh, PG&E and the others have come up with a new uh, R tariff thought. It has not been defined yet and CPUC is not resolved about exactly how that will look, it will most likely not be quite as favorable. And so now is the chance between now and I'd say June, um, you should be uh, in a position to uh, fill out the application for interconnection with, with PG&E. And, and with that application, you specify we want to be on A6 or we want to, in, in your case, stay on A6 and then that can stick. Uh, finally, in this agreement, we're providing all the environmental certificates, environmental benefits to you, except for the tax benefits, which go to our partners. And so, if to the extent that those are valuable to you, and you want to have bragging rights um, with the state's um, mandates, you will have that uh, right to uh, brag. Now, where do we stand today? We have closed on the financing, so we are we are done with the financing partner. The financing partner came forward with this um, document precisely because they said, it's been a long time uh, and we want to make sure that each one of the um, off-takers, you, you, by the way, you're an off-taker, <laughs> that each one of the off-takers is still uh, motivated to go forward and so we want to see that. And they also, um, their most favored long financing partner, PNC, um, objected to the language that we probably erroneously put in there about non-appropriation risk, and so they want a correction to that paragraph. And that is a precondition for moving forward. So that's where we stand today. And yes, this is the, the moment. Um, there's, there's an old uh, hymn in, in the uh, hymn on my the school that I went to for high school, which was once um, once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide. It, it's, the de it's the decision point. Do you want to move forward or not? And we, I'm here to help and try to answer any, uh, any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you, David. Yep. Um, before we get into discussion, um, um, are there any questions from, from the board? Um, I, I do just have um, one quick question. Um, after, and forgive me if, if we cover this um, over the numerous meetings that we've had, um, after the 25 years, what happens to the equipment? Um, will it be reclaimed by right. some group? Or um, there, you will have an option, and it's really, it's going to be more your election than, than ours. But it's a 20-year agreement, and there's two options to extend, which are your option to extend. And so since that option is in your hands, you have the power, and you have the negotiating upper hand, if you will, uh, on the extensions. And you can do any one of four things. You can say, uh, all right, this has been fun, but we're done. Get it out of here. And the project company is obligated to remove the equipment. You could say, well, this has worked fine, the equipment's still functioning, it's still, we still have five more years of warranty on the 
modules and they you've you've refreshed the inverters and that still that has another uh, period of warranty let's keep going we'll offer you the same rates that we just finished at flat or, or four or five years well five you, years. It, if you follow the agreement it would be five years and then you have another option for five more years but again you have the upper hand at that time and you can say well we want it to be ten years or we want it whatever you, you can decide um, another thing is at that point you can say well boy there's been so many advances and now we have not only the pool equipment but we now have um, um, all of this um, uh, greenhouses and we're growing exotic plants and we're selling those plants and so we are using more energy so we need more intensive uh, solar on and and you negotiate a new PPA who knows you negotiate a new new PPA that's certainly uh, an option and the final one which you have is to buy the system and then reap a hundred percent of the benefits and not be paying any third party except for the extent to which it's maintained and cleaned and that uh, option to buy is at fair market value and can't be anything other. Well, I can't today say anything other than fair market value. In year 20, I can say, well, we've gotten everything that we hope for. We're going to give it to you. And we're going to take maybe a small tax advantage for giving it away. I cannot say today, and nobody can say today, we're going to give it away or we're going to have a bargain price. That's against the law in terms of defining this as a service agreement that delivers services from a for-profit to a not-for-profit. And if we <coughs> did anything other than set fair market value, then all of the tax attributes go away, and it's no longer a service agreement. It's a financing agreement that you own and control. <coughs> is, that, is that clear enough? That, what? that is. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those mm -hmm. options and, uh, and for, for that potential. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have some comments and questions. Um, so just uh, at this time, um, if they could just be questions, um, if there are anything of a discussionary nature, we'll need to make a motion um, and then keep those to, to those. Fair enough. <coughs> okay. Um, I read somewhere that the um, if we went ahead with this, the possibility of finishing this project would be sometime in the April time frame. Is that, did I capture that correctly? It, it can be, assuming that the roof work that's supposed to precede us on, on this building can mm -hmm. move ahead in timely. Okay. Uh, and it really, the schedule is going to be largely up to your desire um, and the weather, right? Okay. Um, has a decision been made on the roof? Uh, yes, the, the roof has been, I've had several roofing companies come out, they're kind of ready to go. I haven't actually done the work yet. Uh, I was actually just in touch with State Roofing not too long ago. Steve Tong stopped by here. I haven't actually set dates for the work yet because I kind of wanted to see where we felt here. Uh, but it is a pretty small project that I think quoted out at about $4,000. And time-wise? Quickly. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, <coughs> With regard to the um, shade structure that um, has been proposed out in the pool area, how do you get the power from where that is to the, um, the service connection? Uh, I think we're uh, looking at a, um, a, a boring, um, and the alternate would be to make a sort of a precision cut in the concrete and, and lay it in and then repatch the concrete. But there are um, <coughs> wonderful devices that if you have a hole on one end, you can put in power and guide it very precisely to where you want it to go. Then you have to have a hole on the other end, and you pull it up, pull the wires up into the room where that. Um, okay, so what they do with sewer drains and things like that? Is that what you're talking about? All, all undergrounds would be identified by the appropriate folks. and. and um, one hopes that all of the underground uh, facilities are identified by the people who are supposed to know what they're doing in that. Okay, fair enough. So one hole in the deck and then you pull things through without disrupting the entire deck. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. right. And, and just to, for clarity, within that array, mm -hmm. the small wires would be going panel to panel and coming together in one location and then it would be <coughs> one place where it would descend in and go over. And, right? So there wouldn't be a lot of places where you have to cut up. You would have to drill for each of the posts. But. Okay. 
All right, so the roof is a matter of course. A matter of scheduling it with the roof company okay. and how to do it. Uh, yeah, and again, I had multiple people come down to all Duralast certified. What we have on top of our roof is a membrane made by a company called Duralast. Uh, as long as it is, it is under warranty, I believe at this point there's probably five more years left. If we bring in a Duralast certified roofing company to do the patchwork, uh, there's two things that need to be done. The existing roof work, when they originally laid this, there's some sharp edges that need to be tapered off. All of that has been bitted out and multiple companies come in. One of the companies even did a test patch to make sure that as they patch up the incisions that they will have to make that it'll stick because with the PVC membrane it tends to kind of crumble apart and the test patch worked fine. Um, and then the secondary roof work that would also need to be done is actually part of the installation. Um, where the, and I, we would, I would suggest we use the same company for each of the penetration points for the ballasted system that will go on the top roof, those will need to be resealed and because uh, basically the entire roof is sealed with this PVC membrane and so those would need to be patched at that point as well, but that would actually fall onto uh, the construction side of it. Uh, fixing the roof, so to speak, or shoring or repairing would be done by the district on the district expense um, and we have received multiple bids all of which have come in right around the same four thousand dollar number and have the work done and they're all Duralast certified roofing company so it won't void out the warranty. I even had the Duralast rep come out here uh, and look at the roof and man that was February or March. Um, so I have remained in contact there are two roofing companies that have been Toggling back and forth with one is <coughs> roofing, another is booth and little. Okay. Very good. I will probably have some other questions later, but that's what I can think of at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, are there any other <coughs> questions from the board? Um, and if there are um, any brief questions from um, from the audience, uh, Ray. Yeah, I just have a question on the um, the insurance. I think that was mentioned is the insurance covering um, the district to ensure that if uh, they're not able to provide the uh, power uh, quote as far as uh, buying uh, the, uh, the power that uh, the district then that's what the insurance is covering? Um, no. <coughs> insurance, there are two policies that are going to be relevant. One is the district has insurance for covering all of its facility and liabilities, right? So property damage, um, theft, uh, tree falls, all those things, uh, lightning strikes and so forth. As far as the facility is concerned, your insurance covers. As far as the solar system goes, we must insure it against theft, lightning strike, tree fall, <coughs> other kinds of damage, and we are at risk of loss of that system because we own it and we're at risk of, of loss of it. So uh, our financing partner is absolutely uh, motivated to <coughs> keep it fully insured and to repair it if, as, and when something goes wrong uh, or something is lost. Um, so there's no there's no insurance like for uh, buying uh, the power, I guess, um, you know, over the life of the uh, the system. Then, um, or, or Ray, are you asking um, if there is any type of insurance or assurance that the system will provide the stated um, the, the, the stated um, amount of power? Well, there, you've got a commitment, I guess, to go ahead and pur purchase the, um, the power for whatever it is, X <coughs> cents per kilowatt hour or something. And Whoever it is that is buying that, then is there some assurance that that there is going to be someone that's going to pay that over a period of 
period of time that you have this agreement. My understanding is that we we are paying for this for the power generated. Is that yes. the service agreement is between the CSC that needs en CSD that needs energy and wants energy, and the project company. And so, project company produces electrons and kilowatt hours, and the CSD pays for those as metered. There is no um, reason, I mean, and, and the CSD only pays for that which is metered and delivered. If the system uh, works modestly, then the payments will be modest in direct proportion to the kilowatt hours output. And if it performs very well, then, the, then there will be more payments to the project company uh, than expected and the remainder that will be purchased, need to be purchased from PG&E and MCE will get smaller. In the case of your system, the amount that is the residual payment from, or residual buy that's needed from PG&E and MCE is uh, a little larger in fraction than the typical. So you're not at risk of us going over, <laughs> if you will. So I'm, I'm not sure, um, I mean, it's just, it's just like one's home. Um, you pay for the energy that you use. You don't need insurance to cover whether or not you can pay the energy that you use. I, I don't need that insurance. I don't need, a, I don't need an insurance policy that says the CSD will pay for it. Uh, it it's a contract. So, Ray, I think um, the answer to your question is that we as the district will be purchasing the power produced. And my understanding is that if, there, if the power amount, the, the, the projections in terms of the power produced is um, is not um, as much as, as projected, then the amount that we pay will be less. Um, however, if the amount that is produced is more, then more of our energy is, is then offset uh, based on the, the amount, um, percentage-wise, um, the amount of power that we're looking to, to currently offset. And your credits as long as net energy metering lasts, will get bigger. So your meter will run backwards with respect to the utility more. Will we be grandfathered into um, continue receiving net metering? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> in case that changes, which is very... Well, w everybody in, in um, California is at risk <clears throat> of a change in net energy met metering policy. Yeah. And there are at least three different things that the utilities are asking for, um, and you, all of us will see the rates change somewhat. The peak credit amount will be compressed down, partly because solar is now successful, and so there's not as much need to avoid brownouts be, be due to air conditioning because solar is reducing the peak demand in the brightest and hottest hours of the brightest and hottest months of the year. Um, but that, so, um, yeah, y the ability to access net energy metering credits will be preserved by <coughs> locking in the tariff, the A6 tariff that you're now on. So you don't even need to change your tariff. All, the, all of our other customers in the C program need to elect to change to get into A6. You don't need to change. So you're not at risk of losing A6. Um, you will be grandfathered. And as if the future follows all of the past, um, then that grandfathering will continue as long as that meter exists. And then in regards to net metering, it doesn't seem likely that we would necessarily overproduce. But um, do you know if we would stay um, <coughs> Will we be grandfathered into a one-to-one -one ratio regarding that metering, or because my sure what you mean by one-to-one? -one. Um, in terms of what we what we give back to the grid, is that what we are credited for uh, um, in, in full, 100 percent in that, or do we? My understanding is that part of what's at risk to change with net metering is that what you put into the grid, you if they if they change with legislation, will you will receive a, only a percentage of that, either 50% versus 100%. Well, there are different proposals, and the solar community and the 150,000 people at the PG&E district alone who are, have gone solar already 
are advocating very strongly against the, any dramatic change in these uh, solar rules. But the, uh, it is likely, in my opinion, this is pure personal opinion now, in my personal opinion, it is likely that all customers, individual residences and commercial, your commercial scale customer, even though you're nonprofit, um, will have an additional monthly fixed charge added to your bill just purely to maintain the grid because, you know, if, if you're providing almost all of your own energy needs, well, pg e is still there when the storm hits and you, they have to repair and replace. So there, in my opinion, there will be a fixed charge that will be added, and that will make numbers slightly different from what we have projected. Um, and uh, the, the, a second thing that will be happening is that the amount of credit will be compressed somewhat. How much it's compressed is a matter of complete negotiation right now, and that's uh, look for the first staff draft to come out on the 15th of December of what the staff of the <coughs> CPUC thinks that NEM 2.0 should look like. And that, but that all came, their deadline is December 2016 for implementation of all of that. So it's going to be quite a number of months of continued negotiation in public hearing space uh, on, on these rates. Okay. Are there any other questions from uh, uh, Stephen? Sure. Uh, and cu currently, just brief questions right now. Um, we'll save comments for discussion. Sure. I have questions. Um, okay, so you mentioned that, that it's between the Marinwood CSD and the project uh, company, managing company, I'm not sure exactly what you said, but you didn't say sole ed, so can you clarify that? What, who are you referring to? As yeah, thank you, that's a good question, and this uh, relates to the, uh, a good chunk of the replies that I provided by email um, earlier, which is, which is this, and um, in order, to, the most likely long financing is a sale leaseback in the case of this bundle of projects. In order to achieve a sale leaseback, which has nothing to do with your obligations, it's all on us, okay? In order to achieve a sale leaseback, there has to be a transfer of title of the equipment to the bank that will end up owning it and becoming the lessor and receiving payments from the middle person. That middle person is now the party who, with whom we have closed, C2 Beta Holdings a subsidiary of something called C2 Special Situations Group, C2 SSG, which is affiliated with Generate Capital, uh, is the owner of the project company. So Soled Solar Holdings One LLC, which, with who, which I signed for a year ago with the district, uh, has the interest in that has been transferred to C2. So C2 then we'll march side by side with us to that long financing party and be the lessor who will be intensely interested in operations and successful operations here because they will owe the lease payments to the financing party no matter how much the output is and no matter what you pay. Now, of course, you're going to pay what kilowatt hours are delivered. We have confidence, and financing has confidence, that with good equipment, good design, and the sun still shining, there will be uh, energy created, and you will be paying for it, and that is a valuable contract. <coughs> that is a financeable contract, if you will. And C2 will get some uh, more from, from you and all of the others that they're doing the same thing with, uh, than they will owe to the lessor. So, short answer is, you're not, you don't have worries about whether or not Soul Ed survives or doesn't survive. I think it would be great if I could continue to come and be the one reporting and be in the, in the middle. And we have signed a, uh, an asset monitoring service agreement with them for covering all of the uh, systems in the C portfolio, including this one, such that we will continue to be in the middle. And if there's anything wrong from either side, we're the ones who are going to be first call and, and first explainer as to what's going on. Uh, but 
you won't have to worry about our, our financial health because it's going to be in the hands of a much deeper party. Um, do, do you know that they uh, just uh, started business in May of this year? Um, May, May 2015. The LLC is a new LLC. That is absolutely correct. And it's owned by a 29-year-old who also owns Healthy Planet LLC or something like that. Uh, that is not true. No. Nope. You can look at it online because that's where I found it. But so, in the interest of you got to know who you're doing business with, guys. In the interest of moving this board, uh, I would like to um, call for a motion. Oh, excuse me. Aren't you still asking questions for questions from I, the audience? I didn't know that there were um, any other questions. If you well, have I didn't them. raise my hand because other people were raising their hands, but I do have two questions. Okay. Go ahead, Linda. Okay. First one is. This whole thing that we're doing right now, and I think I understand it, because the contract is changing, you guys are going to be doing a new vote, yes or no, for solar. Is that correct? We are now voting on um, whether or not to proceed with the estoppel certificate and solar PPA amendment, including notice to proceed to engineering. I know. I read that. But that's... And that portion, the notice to proceed to engineering, is what pulls the district um, to, to potential costs if the district backs out from this point forward. But that's what I'm wondering about. Are we making a final, final, absolute final decision? None of the stuff that you guys did a year ago, we're making a final decision to yes, move forward. Basically, if we, if we rescind after this point, if, we, if it is approved tonight, then there will be financial, financial consequences if we back out after this point. Are we voting for this? Are you five members voting yay or nay on this tonight to move forward? Yes. That's it? It's an action That's item. That's yes. It's an action item that we will make a motion on once the question, all the questions from the audience have been answered. So it, you, um, <laughs> short answer is yes to your, to your question. So the answer is yes. Okay. Yep. And my second question is, I also was looking into the C2 beta holdings, and again, as um, Stephen said, it's only been around for six months. <coughs> so who are they actually, how were they created, and were they created specifically for our solar group of nine communities? I mean, is this something that has been yes. in the works for a long time, or has it been in the works just for us? The LLC, C2 Beta Holdings, C2 Beta Holdings, was created to be the owner of all of the projects in the seed portfolio. That's why it was created at the time when they made an offer to us, and we accepted that offer to finance this, plus four other projects which are now finished in Petaluma. So four other project, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Four other projects that have Four other projects at schools in Petaluma, <coughs> which we, together with C2, have finished. Finished in Petaluma, okay. So are you confident in this C2 beta holdings and this, uh, this guy in Delaware? I mean, it's Delaware. And it's a company that was, has only been around, you know, it'll be any time. We don't have a lot of experience. We don't know who they are. Do you know them very well? Um, we chose to go with this group because they are backed by and have a long-term relationship with and partnership with uh, Generate Capital. Generate Capital is led by uh, a fellow uh, who uh, was one of the founders and the initial CEO of Sun Edison, the largest solar and renewable energy company in the country. Uh, his name is Jigar Shaw, J-I-G-A-R-S-A-A-H. And he called me personally and said, I'm thrilled to be working with you. The kinds of work that you're doing is exactly the kinds of work that we want to be doing. And we have his signature on the commitments to fund these projects, as well as the signature of the individuals <coughs> who created uh, C2 Beta Holdings. 
have five million dollars on deposit with PNC in order to uh, provide assurance of the delivery of 85 million dollars of projects which is far beyond what we have. We have in all roughly 10 million dollars of projects. Uh, so yes, we have verified the depth and experience. There are almost no people in the country who have more experience with solar PPAs than some of the principals in this organization. Did you have a question in the back, sir? No, not right now. I was kind of answering, so okay. no, I'm fine. Thank you. I have a question on the board. Uh, since estoppel is a legal term, do each, and I assume this hasn't been uh, vetted with a lawyer, do each of you know what you're about to sign, what estoppel means? I'm sure you do, but if you don't, it's basically, I'll read the, the legal definition, it's a principle that precludes a person from asserting something contrary to what is implied by a previous action or a statement that that person or a previous uh, or by previous pertinent ju judicial determination. Basically, what's written, not statements, is what you're agreeing to. So, you brought up some important points here, and I've, you've, you've heard my concerns about this deal. Stephen, that's, that's okay. To. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. But please understand the legal uh, implications. And, and I would reassure you that the definition just read is correct, that this is a, you know, a serious step that says, uh, yes, in spite of, uh, of anything that may have happened in the last 12 months, 13 months, we believe that this agreement uh, should proceed. And with this one substantive amendment on the non-appropriation issue uh, and with these other small clarifications, it, it will proceed and is still a valid agreement. That's, that is true. That is your action. Thank you. Um, unless there are any other questions, um, I'd like to... Well, I, I just want to um, add on a little bit to what Stephen said. When I was reading about it, it just said you need to get an estoppel certificate if you're doing business with someone you do not know well, or if you are doing a deal with someone for the first time so that nothing can be changed. So this is serious. This is very serious stuff. The board understands that. Thank you, Linda. Uh, so well, the, at the, the time, three Linda, the th please, I'd like for me, us to move on the and three see. Board members Linda. are brand new. And they haven't been Linda, involved. you are now out of turn. Please do not talk out of turn. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to um, see if there is a motion um, from the board to move forward. I'll move um, to approve the estoppel certificate and solar PPA amendment, including notice to proceed uh, to engineering as presented. Okay. Thank you, Leah. Um, is there a second? I'll move to second. Thank you, <coughs> Isabella. Um, motion and seconded by. Um, Director Clement Green and Director Perry. Um, if it's okay with the board, um, I'd like to allow for comments from the public, um, brief comments, um, and then we can go into comments from the board, uh, and then um, we'll be taking a vote. Are there any comments from the public? Stephen? Well, uh, I forward you some information this afternoon. Probably none of you got it because it was after the close of business on Friday. But um, the, about, I don't, about two weeks ago, or a week ago, I guess there was uh, uh, an article about a massive uh, solar uh, structure up at the Hamilton Pool. And what caught my, other than the, the, the community objecting to the huge size of it, they, um, one of the things that caught my attention is they expected full payback in 10 years. And so you're about ready to go forward with a 20-year commitment. You know, that project up there was by Danlin Solar. Uh, you know, you've got Solar City. There are a lot of big companies that you could be doing business with. And uh, you don't have to do this third-party stuff. And I, I think that's a responsible way to go here. Dan on solar may be the builder of this system here. <coughs> That's been in our document for 13 months. 
Are there any other comments from the public? Moving on, um, I would like to um, have discussion amongst the board. Um, start with uh, you, Bill. Well, it's been a year, I think. I think longer. <laughs> or, or longer, since we've been discussing this, going on and on. Um, backing, it seems reasonable and definitely feasible, and it's going to save money for the district, as far as I can tell. I almost think it's a no-brainer. Okay. Leah? I agree. I think every time this gets punted forward without a yes or a no, the district is losing out on some money, so I'm ready to get some savings funneled to the district as quickly as possible and move forward. The district does need that. Thank you. Jeff? Uh, yeah. Um, overall, I think solar is a wonderful thing, and um, I think it's inevitable. Um, I'm a little concerned that I've been focused on so many other issues other than this one. I'm probably the least likely to make a judicious decision <coughs> about this of anyone sitting at this table. Um, I've read as much as I could over the last week since um, this certificate request came in. Um, I by no means think that I've learned enough to be as effective in voting as I should be at this meeting. So I will say that. However, I do believe that um, solar is in our future, and um, I think we also have seen a couple of answers, several answers to our questions about where risk will lie and um, what the savings will be over time, where um, I'm learning. Let's put it that way. Um, I still have some consider, you know, certain doubts about it, but um, that's where I am at this point. Thank you, Jeff. Isabel. Um, I this perspective is very new to me, but um, sitting on this side versus there. However, this topic is not. Um, still. Uh, Reading a boring legalese contract makes you fall asleep, and um, I fought through it, and I had many questions that I forwarded to Eric and uh, to you as well. Um, I mean, Eric for it. Um, so um, they've been answered I, to my satisfaction. Um, I think early in our life, do we make a decision where we are 100% certain of the outcome with zero risk attached. Um, I think it's um, it's, a, it's a solid contract to me above all. Um, given our um, difficult financial situation, I feel obligated to um, take on any cost saving opportunity. And in the bleakest um, scenario listed here, and subtracting from that the cost of replacing our roof, we would still be um, looking at cost savings. Um, and that's the deciding um, um, nail in the coffin. <laughs> so um, I'm very much in favor of this. Great. Thank you, Isabel. Um, in, in general, uh, I share the board's um, comments and, uh, and, and agree. Um, while I think we can all agree that um, there are certain uh, things that we would like to either have had happen differently um, in the past, I think um, what is, is paramount is the savings that this will bring <coughs> to the district. Um, and along with that, um, a, a common point has been brought up that there are potential larger, potentially larger cost savings um, for the district if we were to investigate with um, a different vendor. Um, however, given the point that we are at in terms of what's happening within um, state legislation and, and regarding rebates and subsidizations, uh, I believe we stand to lose more um, if we delay this any further, then then we might stand to gain, um, and I believe it would be the wash. And frankly, as Bill pointed out, this is something that I believe we have been dealing with since we 
first came upon the board. Um, and I do know that it is something that we would like to um, have move forward. And um, so it, it does not continue to take up uh, any more of, uh, of our staff time. So unless there are any other comments, uh, I'll ask, I'll call the question to order. I'll just make one comment. Go ahead, Linda. The very first vote, the solar project was voted down. For the following month, I know that Bill Hansel, Tom Horn, and Bill Shea got together and discussed it. And at the very next meeting, the vote was redone, and Mr. Shea changed his vote to yes. So this was first voted down, then there was <coughs> some negotiations between two board members, and it was voted yes. That's all I want to say. I'm sorry? This, this has come to the board even before then, so <coughs> I, I don't know. I'm just talking about the vote. And, and Linda, I'll just briefly speak to that because um, I do want us to move forward with the agenda. Um, even if even if that were the case and it did happen in that way, um, my understanding is that there is no, there, there was nothing prohibiting um, that discussion happening amongst the, the stated parties that, that you Oh, I'm not saying, mentioned. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Not at all. I, I just think that's important to um, point out in regards to your comment. Uh, Stephen, quickly. So, uh, one of the questions, uh, as you know, I got a, a bunch of documents from Eric on this, um, and I'll be looking very closely at everything. But one of the things was that Bill uh, Hansel had looked at putting a, uh, a shade structure right out here, which actually gives you the same amount of square footage. It seems to be a uh, a better choice because that would give us an option uh, for an outdoor space and extend our classroom. Why was that rejected and why are we still fixated on this massive structure in the uh, pool area? I don't think that was necessarily rejected. Um, I, I think just at each point things just needed to move further than um, could allow for incorporation of that. I don't necessarily think that would be a bad idea. Um, however, again, given the point that we were at, if we, did, if we were or did make any significant changes to this at this time, it would essentially either kill the project in its tracks or it would at the very least delay it until after next pool season, both of which I believe um, the, the board would, would not be in favor of. Um, so again, I don't think it's a bad idea it necessarily being there, but at the very least, um, being at the pool, it does provide a larger um, rentable location for, um, for pool parties and, and stands to, that section also stands to generate revenue as this proposed, the section you proposed would as well. So I don't think it's bad, but I think it's, um, I think it's, it's you know, at least a, a portion of that. Mr. Could you allow me, um, uh, quite out of turn, uh, to make a comment. Uh, that was not deeply uh, pursued, but the, our feeling is that if there were a classroom added here, that it would be a good location for solar to be on top of that future classroom. Mm -hmm. If some kind of structure were put there for solar before any classroom were added, then it would, might inhibit the flexibility of the CSD to put the classroom there. So <coughs> that was one of the things that was in the tussle of, of information back and forth that I heard. Um. That's great. Thank you for that perspective. All right. Um, again, I will now call the question um, to order. Those in favor of, um, and Carolyn, can you uh, please repeat the motion? This is just Leah Klein and Green and Isabella Perry to approve the Estable Certificate and Solar PP Amendment, including those to proceed to engineering. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Um, motion passes um, with uh, Director Naylor um, opposing. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Mr. Greenhart. Uh, and thank you, um, public and board members.